remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Travis Cook back with you once again, and we are now, as we tape this tonight, a full two weeks into the horrible and destructive government shutdown. Oh yes, that horrible and destructive government shutdown. But I, you know, I, I, I got to tell you something to all of you reporters out there, to all you politicians that are telling us how bad this supposedly is. I got to admit something: I haven't felt one ounce of pain from this shutdown yet. Sorry, you know, the lights are still on, flags still going behind me. Plenty of food in the fridge. Haven't seen the airplanes falling out of the air. And we take this show close enough to an airport that I would know if any planes were falling out of the air. No, things are going pretty well. Frankly, no federal government, no problem. Kind of makes me think sometimes that maybe we should think about a little bit more in the way of government shutdowns. Maybe some more expansive ones. Maybe in a more permanent basis. That's probably another discussion for another time, though. Because what I wanted to talk about today was a certain line of questioning and a line of reasoning that I'm hearing a lot in the media over the last couple of weeks. Frankly, it really burns my fanny. I've heard practically every uh, pundit out there, every commentator, every reporter, every talking head ask this question of politicians. They've always asked a question uh, similar to what impact will this government shutdown have on the Republican brand? How much damage will this government shutdown do to the Republican brand? They've always got to look real concerned when they say it like this. I ask the question like this. That poor Republican brand, what will this do to it? And I've seen many a Republican politician over the last week or so bemoan the damage to the Republican brand that this government shutdown will do. You know, as a conservative, as an American, as a Tea Partier, as a voter, I've got one question I would like like to ask all of these people who are so concerned about the Republican brand. I would ask you this question. Just why the hell should I care about the Republican brand? Now, here's where I'm coming from with this. One of the biggest misconceptions in American politics is that Conservative Americans are a group of people who have an undying loyalty to the Republican Party. This isn't exactly true, although I will admit that those of you outside the conservative movement, I can see where you would think that. I can see where you would think that we have some sort of undying loyalty to the GOP. And the reason I can see that is because, to be quite frank about it, for most of us during our adult lives, for me the last 20 years or so, for others it may be longer, For most of us during our our adult lives, the Democratic Party has been so far off the reservation, they've been so, pardon my French, batshit crazy, that to us, a reasonable and sane and moral person just could not vote for a Democrat under any circumstances, virtually. After all, the Democratic Party's been the party of baby killing, they've been the party of helping the criminals and standing up for the criminals, standing up for the freeloaders and the people that want handouts and the people that claim they're victims all the time. So to us, during our adult lifetimes, we haven't seen anything come down from that Democratic side that we could get behind. They're oh forever as far as we're concerned. What that means is that when conservatives have voted, we have, yes, we voted, voted for Republicans. But there's been times we haven't voted in the numbers that they need and the Republicans have suffered because of it. See the last presidential election. What I'm getting to is this. For a long time, much longer than most people realize, there has been a certain level of distrust between conservatives and a lot of those Republicans that are in Washington. Yes, you're seeing it now in the national media. You're seeing it now play out in this whole government shutdown thing. But trust me, it's been there all the time. I remember back during the George W. Bush days when you would see conservatives get together and we would get to talking and and pretty soon the conversation would always seem to to, to, to get to the point of, man, what's... W doing spending all this money in education. Man, why is George W. Bush putting all this money in Africa for AIDS? What the hell's up with that? Now, granted, that didn't really make it to the national media at the time, and you wouldn't have heard it on the talk shows and on the radio and so forth, but believe me, you heard it in the coffee shops and the uh, the bars and the barber shops and, and around the water cooler at work. Anytime you got conservatives together, you would hear that type of that type of questioning. So it's been there all along. It's just kind of boiling over right now. 
But the reason there's been that distrust, the reason you're seeing it now is because to a lot of us conservatives, to most of us conservatives, there are far more important motivations than simply winning presidential elections. To us, the future of America is far more important than any election. To us, standing on principle is far more important than just making sure you have a certain number of R's in Congress versus D's. Let's cut the crap here. Let's get, get one thing straight. Political parties exist for two reasons and two reasons only. And I'm talking about both parties here. Political parties exist for only two reasons. Number one, to raise money. Number two, to win elections. That's it. That's what they do. I'm not saying that as a complaint. I'm not saying that as a criticism. Just saying that as an acknowledgement of what their role in the political process is. What that means is that political parties do not exist to better America. They do not exist to put America in a better place for its future. They do not exist to make laws and obstruct laws that will better us in the long term, except to the degree that doing so will help them raise money and win elections. Now, for those of us who are voters, for those of us who are conservatives, there's far bigger fish to fry out there than just that. So yeah, we've got a lot of problem with what these Republicans have done. You know, one of the things you've heard all week from every liberal reporter that, that can get a hold of it, they've all put out there that this government shutdown thing is doing just tremendous damage to the Republican Party and the Republican approval numbers are in the toilet. Well, yeah, that's true to an extent. But what they don't tell you is that Obama's approval numbers are also in the toilet. They're around 35% last time I checked. Now, when you take all those numbers together and you put it all together, what do you see? You see a nation as a whole that's saying to Washington as a whole, a pox on both your houses. We don't trust either one of you. And with good reason. You know, for a long time, much longer than just Obama's presidency, I mean, going back the whole time that I've been voting for 20 years, for a long time, I have heard people from every conceivable part of the political aisle you can think of. Conservatives, liberals, moderates, independents, apolitical people, anybody you name. I have heard so many people talk about how they hated what goes on in Washington and how they hated the Washington mentality of you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, and all the deal making in the backroom crap and all the things that go on over there. They feel disconnected from it. They feel that Washington does not represent America. And they've always said, all these people I run into, that they wish at some point somebody could break through that glass ceiling and someone could put Washington in its place. Well, right now, through this government shutdown, the Tea Party has done just that. And yet I'm hearing some of you people out there, some of you people that for years bitched and moaned about all that went on in Washington and wished upon wish that someone would go in there and kick the door in and do something different. Some of you have the audacity to criticize us for doing it. Well, to hell with you. Because I'm glad at long last to see somebody finally standing up for principle, finally standing up for what's right in Washington, regardless of the consequences. And to think that the Ted Cruz's and the Mike Lee's of the world are going up there and doing nothing more than what their voters and their district told them to do, and yet other Republicans are turning their backs on them. Other Republicans are selling them out. Other Republicans are more concerned about some presidential election or some other election down the line than they are with solving America's vexing financial problems. When we're at a point when reporters ask first and foremost about political strategy than they do the future of this nation, we're in trouble. But thank God for this country that we have the Tea Party and that we have people like Ted Cruz and Mike Lee and Rand Paul and to a lesser extent, yes, thank God that America has people like me to keep our eyes on the real prize. People know that establishment Republicans are spineless right now. That's why they're at such low numbers. If a pollster called me and asked me if I approve or disapprove of the, of the Republican Party, I'd say I disapprove of them. I disapprove of where the party leadership is at right now. So I'd be one of those people causing that low number. Americans as a whole distrust the Republican Party for vastly different reasons. The liberals hate them because of what they perceive they stand for. We hate them for what they don't stand for. 
But it just goes to show you that in politics or life itself, when you stand in the middle of the road, the only thing you can assure yourself is that eventually you're going to get hit by a truck. Doesn't matter which lane it's coming from, you're going to get hit by a truck. So as far as the Republican Party goes, if you continue to be a party that cares more about the next election than you do solving our financial problems, then to hell with you. I and many other voters have given you every benefit of the doubt we could for 20 years. We would like to take this party over and lead it to a new future. But if that's impossible, then yeah, third party, that's on the table. I've always said on this show that it shouldn't be the first choice, but it should never be off the table. And frankly, you people in the leadership of the GOP are making it tougher and tougher and tougher not to exercise that option. I'd be very careful if I were you in the next few months and the next couple of years. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.